Okay, quick video here from Charlie on using Jasmine with Require.js. So we're going to look at a program which is in um, JS objects called Jasmine 01. And normally you would run the program by typing node, by typing npm install, and then you would type grunt test. And what that's going to do is do two things. First, it runs JS hint to make sure all the files, every JS file in your project, except for those in the node modules directory, are clean. And then it's going to run a couple tests here. Um, let's take a look at how we set this up. There's two different pieces, three different pieces. One is package.json. And here, we're not loading any of the things that we might want for the client. I'm just trying to focus on how we test when we're doing it. So there's no dependencies, only dev dependencies, okay? Only the things that you're doing when you're testing. I've just taken everything else out of this project. There's grunt here, there's JS hint, there's grunt integration with Karma, then there's Karma itself, Karma integration with Jasmine, Karma integration with Phantom JS, Karma integration with Acquire JS, and Karma integration with something called the Spec Reporter. Now, there's two things to notice here. This fancy text that we get here, that's the spec reporter. If you don't include the spec reporter, then by default, you get a much simpler output. It usually just shows this line right here without any um, details about what happened in your test. Um, and notice that we're using phantom.js. So what's happening is this code is getting loaded into a browser, but it's a um, fake browser. It's a headless browser is what they call it, a browser that does not actually um, put up any interface at all. It simply runs in the background, but it acts like a browser. Okay. Um, if you want, you can switch over to using the Chrome browser with these tests, but we're not going to cover that in this particular one. So that's what gets loaded. Then in your grunt file, you've got two things going on. We set up JS hint, which is not the topic of this convert, this particular video, but um, you should always run JS hint together with Karma. And then in your grunt file, you have a reference to Karma and you just name your task, which I'm gonna call Karma. And then you set up the config file for it, which is just gonna be karma.conf.js. Many people put the karma.conf.js file in their spec or their test directory. I'm putting it in the root of my directory here. But if you wanted to put it in the test directory, you would just specify the path here. Okay, then down at the bottom here, what we do is we do grunt karma, which um, loads the npm task karma, and we put that over here. So it's an npm task, and we load that, and we're doing loading JS hint. And so that makes sure that these two guys are covered, grunt and JS hint. And then we're going to register a special, a special task called ta test, which first runs JS hint and then runs karma. The last thing to see here is the karma.conf file, where we set up a base path. We say the frameworks we want to work with. In this particular case, we want to work with Jasmine and require JS. And we're working with require JS because um, if you look in here, you will see that we are using require on JS. We're using the define for require JS. So we um, bring in Jasmine, we bring in require JS. Now we're going to load some files here. These are the ones that we want. First, we have a file called main karma. And um, I have placed that in my source directory. Frankly, most people put it in their test directory. Um, but I have placed this particular one in my source directory. And let me get rid of some things I just were playing with here. So what this is, is our require.js code for loading the files. Now let's go back and look at karma.conf for a little bit. We load main karma, but over here we just say we want these files to be available, but we don't want them to be loaded. Why are we not loading the files in our source and our spec directory? Because require.js is going to load them. If we weren't using require.js, we wouldn't have this, this part here. It would just look a lot simpler. We'd just say files, let's load star, source star.js, um, 
and load spec star.js. <clears throat> but we're using require.js, so in this particular case, we're saying we want you to make them available to us, but we don't want you to load them. And then main karma in this code here is going to load our two our tests, whatever tests we happen to have available, which happen to be two in number. There's the number test and the simple test. Um, you, those, they're so simple that they're not worth looking at, um, but they're available in JS hint in the Jasmine 01, in the JS objects in the Jasmine 01 folder. So the weird thing and the thing that's most confusing about Karma loads files in a base directory, okay? And what does that mean? I don't really know exactly, but as you know, might notice here, I actually log out um, the files that are being loaded. We go through the list of the files that Karma has loaded, and the files that Karma has loaded are the ones that we tell it to load. And we go through the list of those files and we log each one out, and you can see that each one's in a directory, in a folder called base, which doesn't really exist, but that um, Karma does. And by putting this line in here as our base URL, then we're saying by default, we're going to load all files from the spec directory. Now, of course, the source file, the yet number file, is not in um, the spec directory. It's not here. The file that we want to test is in the source directory. So what I'm doing over here is I say, let's explicitly say the path to the get number file, which is what we tend to do with um, <coughs> require JS anyhow. So here we're explicitly saying where get number is. And then we, the files that we found that we want to test, we put them here and ask require to load them. And then in our number test, we are going to actually load um, we want to use get number, and since we've said the path to it back over here, we said where it's located, that it's in the get number directory, then when we do the number test, we can actually load it here just the same way we always would when we're using require. And then here's one test just to sort of see if things are working. We do a test against a local function, and then we start going after the methods in get number which are very simple methods, just, you know, get seven, get eight, and so on. And the number test, test them to see that they're working. What we're really testing is to make sure we've done everything right. And mostly by being right, that means that we've set up this correctly. Um, the only line of code here that maybe needs some explanation is this one. This is a regular expression, and it says, we want to test, we want, we want to look for all the files in the spec directory, and if the file that's being loaded of all the Karma files, if it's in the spec directory, we want to say, here's our regular expression, everything in the spec directory, and then we test the file to see if it's in the spec directory, and if it is, we add it to our test array, and then we load it right here. We ask require to load all of those tests. And I spelled, I log that out for you here because it's a little confusing. We found two files in the spec directory, number test, simple test. And then we end them up in this array of number test, spec, simple test. And that's the array that gets loaded as a, um, in the dependencies right here. Okay. And then when you're done, all you have to do is write grunt test and it'll work. And you can run your tests or you can write karma. Um, start and that would also do the same thing if you like to go into that interactive mode which i normally do um, in that interactive mode come in here to karma.conf and roll down to um, single run and set it to false and then you'll enter into that um, interactive mode here so now we're in the interactive mode um, Let's look here. The files, we're not excluding anything. The spec is that special spec reporter, the one that gives us a fancy output that looks like this. So that's getting loaded there. Um, the web server port, that's just the default port. Log levels are default, colors are default. 
auto watch should we watch the files in the single run true yes then we're loading just phantom js if we wanted to we could load karma chrome instead of phantom js but then we'd have to specify that we want karma chrome launcher and not the chrome karma phantom js launcher or you can launch them both all right that's all i wanted to say thank you now um have fun playing with this stuff this seems like a very good simple straightforward example of how to do it explained in a little disorderly, but fairly comprehensive detail. Thank you now. Bye.